Why should you consider a 1031 exchange presented by Matthew Shane, President and CEO of Shane Global Ventures? Shane Global Ventures, bringing money, people and opportunities together today for a better tomorrow. What is a reverse 1031 exchange? In a typical 1031 exchange, a surrendered property is sold and replacement property is purchased. Sometimes it may be beneficial to do it in reverse, which is when a replacement property is bought first, and then a surrendered property is sold after the fact. Hence, where the process gets its name from. A reverse exchange is an accepted form of exchange under current tax law revenue procedure 2000-37. A reverse exchange presents three challenges. First, the surrendered and replacement properties cannot be owned by the investor at the same time. So an exchange accommodating title holder will take title to the replacement property. The qualified intermediary working on the exchange will usually set up a meeting with an exchange accommodating title holder. After this, the exchange accommodating title holder takes title to the replacement property, the investor will have the normal 180 days to complete the exchange by selling the relinquished property. The second is financing the replacement property. Funds need to be available for the purchase of the replacement property before the sale of the surrendered property. An investor thinking of doing a reverse exchange will need to provide cash out of pocket to spend on a replacement property. The exchange accommodating title holder will take hold of the replacement property's title. A lender such as a bank or federal credit union will generally not lend money to the exchange accommodating title holder. A reverse exchange requires the investor to purchase the replacement property in all cash with few exceptions. Third and finally, a reverse exchange will add several thousand dollars in additional exchange fees and closing costs to the exchange transaction which makes it the most expensive method of exchange. Alternative method. The favored method of completing a reverse exchange is for the exchange accommodating title holder to take title to the replacement property in an all-cash purchase. However, it is sometimes possible for the EAT to take title to the replacement property and for a loan to be part of the purchase price. Alternative structures are rare and often difficult to accomplish. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more. Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 516-783-5600. The exchange accommodating title holder and their role. The funds used to purchase a replacement property must be given to the exchange accommodating title holder from the investor as a loan before the property is purchased. The exchange accommodating title holder will pay back the loan after the surrendered property is sold. The investor will have full access to the replacement property during the exchange accommodating title holder ownership and can rent the property immediately. For the exchange accommodating title holder to take the title and transfer ownership to the investor, a single member LLC will usually be used. After the exchange is complete, the exchange accommodating title holder will usually transfer the LLC to finish the exchange. This will likely save on transfer taxes, but will require the investor to manage the LLC after the completion of the exchange. A reverse exchange will require specific and unique tax reporting at a year's end. The qualified intermediary should assist with such reporting. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. When executing a 1031 exchange, you should want to work with a commercial real estate broker who has a lot of inventory, experience, and knowledge. Matt Shane regularly has over $250 million worth of inventory. To put it frankly, if Matt doesn't have what you're looking for, then it's possible it doesn't exist. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more, Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 516-783-5600. U.S. Treasury regulations specifically require the use of a qualified intermediary to handle the 1031 exchange process. 
the qualified intermediary must be a neutral third party to the deal and will be written into the transaction as the seller or buyer to ensure the exchanger avoids constructive receipt of sales proceeds, meaning it protects an investor from having to pay income tax on the sale despite having not received any physical income. It is recommended that all exchange documents are drafted and reviewed by a licensed attorney. A sound exchange agreement is the best defense in the event of an audit by the IRS. In the unlikely event of an IRS audit, it is recommended that an investor seek immediate help from a professional audit support team. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. When executing a 1031 exchange, you should want to work with a commercial real estate broker who has a lot of inventory, experience, and knowledge. Matt Shane regularly has over $250 million worth of inventory. To put it frankly, if Matt doesn't have what you're looking for, then it's possible it doesn't exist. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more, Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 516-783-5600 types of exchanges. Reverse exchange. The reverse exchange allows investors to acquire replacement property prior to selling. The reverse exchange be more complicated than most. An investor cannot own both the new replacement property and soon to be surrendered property at the same time. An exchange accommodating title holder will need to go on the title to one of the two properties involved in the exchange. Investors considering a reverse exchange should go through a 1031 exchange accommodator. Investors should contact a 1031 exchange accommodator well in advance of closing on their replacement property. Delayed exchange. A delayed exchange is one of the most common methods of exchanging. The delayed exchange allows investors to sell a property and then acquire replacement property within a given time frame of 180 days. However, an investor has to have found a replacement property within 45 days of escrow. The replacement property has to have an equal or greater value to the property being surrendered. Construction and Improvement Exchange The Construction and Improvement Exchange allows investors to use the exchange proceeds to build on land or improve an existing property. The Construction and Improvement Exchange is often used to acquire a fixer-upper. The construction and improvement exchange process can be used to make improvements on the existing structure. There are specific criteria an investor must meet to be able to qualify for a construction and improvement exchange. It is recommended that an investor should contact an exchange accommodator to see if they can qualify. Simultaneous exchange. A simultaneous exchange is when the surrendered property is sold and the replacement property is purchased on the same day with concurrent closings. The simultaneous exchange is uncommon and rarely happens. However, it is recommended investors should still use an exchange accommodator when doing a simultaneous exchange. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. When executing a 1031 exchange, you should want to work with a commercial real estate broker who has a lot of inventory, experience, and knowledge. Matt Shane regularly has over $250 million worth of inventory. To put it frankly, if Matt doesn't have what you're looking for, then it's possible it doesn't exist. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more, Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 516-783-5600. The exchange process for simple guidelines. Strictly following the legal requirements of Section 1030, one of the Internal Revenue Code, is highly recommended for a successful exchange. Investors should be aware of four basic requirements when entering into a delayed exchange and should seek the advice of a tax accountant or attorney to ensure the investor properly follows the tax code. The four basic requirements for a successful exchange to occur are as follows. 1. Property Qualifications Internal Revenue Code states that the properties involved in an exchange must be held for productive use in a trade or business, and slash or for investment must be like kind. 2. Timeline The IRS provides a maximum of 180 days to complete an exchange. 
the timeline begins when the close of escrow of the surrendered property. The new property or properties must be purchased on or before midnight of the 108th day. With no exceptions, the IRS requires that all potential replacement properties be identified by midnight of the 45th day of the exchange. 3. Identification. The identification of all potential replacement properties is required on and or before the 45th day of exchange. Identification must be in. Writing and the description of the properties must be detailed and clear. The IRS provides two rules for identifying replacement property. Three property rule The three property rule allows for identification of any three properties of any price anywhere in the United States. 200% rule The 200% rule is an option for identifying more than three properties. With the 200% rule, four or more properties can be identified. However, the combined value of all properties identified cannot exceed 200% of the property sold. 4. Tax deferral to defer 100% of capital gains tax liability. Two requirements must be met. Reinvest the cash. All the cash that was made from the sale of the surrendered property must be reinvested into the new property and or properties. Equal or greater in value the new property or properties must be equal or greater in value to the property sold. Any money not reinvested will be taxed. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. When executing a 1031 exchange, you should want to work with a commercial real estate broker who has a lot of inventory, experience, and knowledge. Matt Shane regularly has over $250 million worth of inventory. To put it frankly, if Matt doesn't have what you're looking for, then it's possible it doesn't exist. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more. Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 516-783-5600. Frequently asked questions. How long do I have to own a property before I can exchange it? The longer the better. Unfortunately, there is no safe holding period for property to automatically qualify for an exchange. The property only needs to be held as an investment for it to be eligible for an exchange. The length of ownership is only one factor the IRS looks at when determining if a property is held for investment. Can I sell my duplex and purchase raw land? Yes, the properties that are involved in the exchange need to be held for either productive use in trade, business, and or investment. Holding land for future appreciation is considered held for investment. Can I buy my replacement property first? Yes. This process requires a reverse exchange. A reverse exchange may be an option if it is structured according to the safe harbor guidelines. Can I move into a rental property that was originally purchased as part of a 1031 exchange? Yes. It is recommended that an investor should keep in mind that the IRS will look at their intent for the property to determine if their exchange is valid. If the IRS feels their original intent when the property was purchased was to use it as a primary residence, they may have your exchange disqualified. It is recommended to rent out your property for a minimum of two years before using it for personal use. Do I have to reinvest all of my cash? No. However, any cash that is not reinvested in real estate will be taxable. This is known as a crash boat. The general rule of thumb is if you don't want to pay taxes, the way to avoid doing so is to reinvest all of your cash and purchase a property of equal or greater value. How long do I have to complete my exchange? You have exactly 180 days. However, you have only 45 days to identify a potential replacement property. The 180 days starts after you close escrow on the property you are selling. How do I get my exchange started? It is recommended that an investor contact an exchange accommodator. Once you've started escrow, they will draft up an exchange agreement and work with you and your escrow company to make the exchange. Calculating taxes, understanding the adjusted basis and gain. Many property owners are familiar with the three terrible T's of real estate termites, tenants, and trash. Unfortunately, the terrible T's often become such a burden that investors decide they want out of real estate altogether. 
When an investor reaches that point, the three terrible T's become the four terrible T's. The worst T of them all is added taxes. Almost all states require the payment of capital gains taxes when selling investment real estate. Taxes will likely be paid at both the federal and state level. State tax rates vary state to state depending on what state you are selling your property in. For example, say a property was sold in the state of New York, the sale of investment property would result in the following tax liabilities. 9.3 state capital gains tax rate. 15% federal capital gains tax rate. 25% depreciation recapture tax rate. Calculating the tax bill after the sale of your property is not as hard as one might think, but it does require that you have an understanding of how much gain is in your property. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. When executing a 1031 exchange, you should want to work with a commercial real estate broker who has a lot of inventory, experience, and knowledge. Matt Shane regularly has over $250 million worth of inventory. To put it frankly, if Matt doesn't have what you're looking for, then it's possible it doesn't exist. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more, Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 5167835600. formulas to calculate capital gains tax. If you're looking for someone to help you buy, sell, or grow a business or real estate portfolio, look no further than Matthew Shane. When executing a 1031 exchange, you should want to work with a commercial real estate broker who has a lot of inventory, experience, and knowledge. Matt Shane regularly has over $250 million worth of inventory. To put it frankly, if Matt doesn't have what you're looking for, then it's possible it doesn't exist. From his extensive network comprised of 50,000 plus incredible people to his negotiating, communication, Wall Street experience, and so much more, Matt Shane has you covered. Call today 5167835600. Disclaimer, this presentation is to be considered for entertainment purposes only. Always consult with tax, legal, and other professionals prior to making any major decision. All data included in this presentation may be out of date. Laws, rules, and regulations change on a regular basis, so make sure you're getting the latest information. This presentation is not to be redistributed without the written consent of Shane Global Ventures. All rights reserved.